Hi everyone, so we're back with all the premium cameras, instant cameras on the market here today. Um, the i2 has been out now for about a month, so I think many of you may be wondering whether this is the, really the best instant camera on the market. We have some notable contenders here to compare the i2 with. So just to be fair, we have actually two cameras that are shooting the Polaroid format, and we have two cameras or two devices that are shooting the Instax wide format. By doing this, we're hoping it'll be a bit more fair and I think uh, based on each device's pros and cons, you can make a better decision on which is the ideal device for your photography journey. Okay, so the first camera we have today is actually an SX70 uh, that has been refurbished by Mint. This is actually the Ming edition. Uh, it's a folding camera. I think you guys all know this, very familiar with this camera. It has a lens, glass lens. Uh, of course, the recent uh, Polaroid camera is the i2. I think it has been all over YouTube right now. Uh, we have a premium Instax camera. The only one in the market that is being made currently is being made by Mint. This is a RF70. Uh, and also, just for comparisons, we have an Instax white printer. The reason why we consider this a premium camera is because it's not just the cost of the printer itself. It's, it includes actually the fact that you might have a DSLR or maybe a premium smartphone to take advantage of all its functions here. Um, let's compare the physical characteristics. So the SX70 is a camera that was made in the 70s. It is actually premium and this model itself from Mint has actually skins that are made of metal. So it has a really good feel um, to it, has a nice heft and has that whole premium feel to the camera. And of course you have this time machine that it comes with. So that makes it excellent for you to control uh, the settings uh, on this camera. I'll get into that in a bit more detail later on. Uh, of course, you have the new Polaroid i2. Okay, unfortunately, it doesn't have a glass lens like the SX70, but based on our testings that we have done uh, just today, I think you'll be quite pleased with the clarity on the optics on this camera. Um, it too has a very premium feel. It actually is easier to hold on the hand. I like the feel of the plastic. Um, it doesn't have the sleek nature of the SX70, but all in all, I think feel-wise, it's pretty good. The RF70 is quite an interesting camera. It's actually a folding bellows camera. So similar to the SX70, it actually folds into a very neat form. Actually, if you compare both of them, the SX70 just ever so slightly thinner maybe ever so slightly shorter as well. Um, and of course the printer, um, yeah, it's a, it's a rectangle. <laughs> okay, let's, let's talk about the unique features of each camera. Okay, so the uh, Mint SX70 camera here um, actually has a time machine that you can use to control the shutter speed. Often at times when we think about aperture and shutter speed, we think, about, we think of it as two individual things that we can control willy-nilly. But on this camera, it's not the same. They are actually one device together. So when you look at the slow mos that we've taken, you'll notice that the camera actually decides on the speed at which the opening opens and the size at the same time. So actually you can see that the aperture and shutter speed are one and the same. So it's a bit funny that it has a time machine that you can use to dictate the shutter speed. So what we've noticed in our testing is this time machine doesn't really go up to one over 2000 of a second. What it does, it just compensates. It does some kind of exposure value compensation to mimic maybe the camera at f8 over 1 over 2000. But in reality, probably this is equivalent to f22 of s1 over 200, for instance. Okay, so that's something to note if you decide to get this camera. You won't be able to do full manual exposure if you think you're actually getting this camera. The camera still decides uh, the aperture and shutter. Okay. So the next camera is the Polaroid i2. What it has that the other cameras don't have is that it has autofocus built in. It uses LiDAR. The LiDAR isn't without its own faults, of course. Uh, and it has exposure compensation built in similarly to the SX70. It comes with a plastic lens, but the sharpness of this plastic is exceptional. Um, if you ask me, I think it's equivalent or even better than the SX70. Of course, this camera isn't an SLR, it's a viewfinder camera. So sometimes using, uh, doing creative filters with this is a bit hard. Of course, this camera has Bluetooth 
and actually it has full manual capabilities other than the ability to manually focus. Then the third camera is of course the Mint RF70. Uh, it unfolds as such. Uh, it too is a manual camera similar to the SX70. Uh, unlike the SX70, it, it, you can actually manually control the shutter speed and the aperture. So shutter speed is controlled here and the aperture speeds are actually controlled by this dial here. So if you want to get a fully manual, a, can, a camera you can fully manually control, then this is that camera for you, okay? And then if you have a digital camera or a handphone and you wish to make prints like um, these here, then of course you can use a printer such as this. Uh, of all these three things, this is the most compact if you pair it with a handphone. Uh, of course, uh, this, I wouldn't consider this truly a camera per se, I would consider this a printer. It has like an optical strip that lights up and exposes the film. Um, when you talk about manual exposures and adjusting settings, you can do that, of course, within your digital platform, such as your handphone or digital cameras. And then, of course, when, once you're happy with the outcome, you can print it out. And usually, all, you, you will actually get more dynamic range captured on a printer than what you would from all these uh, cameras here. So you may be wondering um, who these cameras are for. Uh, all these cameras, they can still be bought. Uh, they still have warranty, they've been refurbished if they're vintage, uh, if they're new, they've been just manufactured within the last year or so. Um, these cameras, I would say, are for advanced users. The reason being is that they have a lot of advanced features that most beginners may not be really into. Uh, Cost-wise, it also doesn't make sense for a beginner to jump straight away into the premium system unless, of course, money is no object. Um, this here, for instance, if you think about price-wise, this goes for about 1100 right now uh, from Mint. Uh, maybe a bit more when, by the time you see this video, who knows. Um, the i2 currently retails for about 600 USD. The Mint RF70 goes for about 900 USD. And I believe the printer here, it goes for about 150 USD, but you have to factor in the digital system or your handphone camera you're using. That I think can easily add another 500, 600 to the price of this uh, device itself. Um, all these cameras, uh, as they have advanced features, uh, beginners may find them a bit more complicated to use and a bit more convoluted. But ease of use wise, if you think about it, the two easiest to use cameras are the two Polaroid cameras. The reason being is that the Mint, once you remove the time machine, it does all the auto exposure for you. All you have to do is look through the viewfinder, focus, and then you just press the camera to take the picture. Okay. Uh, of course, it's easy to fold as well and it can be kept quite easily anywhere. The i2 is also has its own auto mode. Um, unfortunately, um, exposure on it is not as precise as the more robust vintage cameras. Uh, however, if you watch our previous video, uh, I, I do recommend, even after updating it, we did notice that the exposure isn't so good. So all you have to do is maybe just compensate by uh, going into a negative exposure value and um, use otherwise is pretty much simple. If you're going to take fast action, this is the camera for you. It has autofocus built in uh, as opposed to the SX70 here. The other camera is the Mint RF70. As I said, this is the only camera with full manual capabilities from focus to exposure. But of course, if you feel a bit lazy, you can switch to auto exposure. However, you still have to focus manually. Uh, my pet peeve with this camera is of course the fact that it has dual windows. One for the rangefinder and one for composition. Um, the reason being um, that I find it a bit cumbersome to use. Of course the fact that they are split, it makes it easier to focus with one since the uh, rangefinder patch is a bit bigger. Uh, but I think many people find it a bit cumbersome because you have to shift your eye from using the rangefinder here to focus and then after that, you have to recompose based on this. Exposure-wise, this camera, I think depending on the model you get, some will overexpose slightly, some will underexpose slightly. 
But if you're using a camera like this, I think you should be metering uh, using an external meter so that you can use the full capabilities of this camera. Of course, to use a printer, you might think it's quite foolproof, but I would argue otherwise. Uh, prints are another dark art in photography, okay? Uh, doing a proper print, especially on uh, instant film, is going to be not so simple. Of course, Fuji has their own app, which simplifies a lot of the procedures, but if you really want to maximize the capabilities, I think you need to talk about color space and how you can convert your image into a color space that the printer can read uh, and output into Instax uh, film. Okay, so if you get the SX70, um, you don't have to really worry about battery life. All the film that is required for this camera needs to have a battery. So you need to buy a Polaroid 600 film or SX70 film. Uh, unfortunately, film with batteries do cost a bit more. So you have to factor that into the use of this camera. So Polaroid film is already expensive. Uh, and the film with batteries, of course, are going to be a bit more pricey. If you like to shoot SX70 film, for instance, uh, availability will be a bit more difficult as well. The Polaroid i2 can take all variants of 600 uh, film. Uh, it can take SX70 film as well. It can take i-type film as well. So if you want the most flexibility in terms of film availability, uh, this is the camera for you. It does have a built-in battery, uh, which is rechargeable. However, it's not user replaceable. Recently, Polaroid put out a notice saying they are in the works of thinking of toying with having some kind of program where cameras with batteries that are dying can uh, probably go in to have it refurbished. Exact details are still not out yet, so I'm not sure what is going to come of that program, but it looks like there is an avenue for you to replace these batteries in the future. The Mint RF70 has the best battery uh, combination. Uh, basically, it uses two AA batteries. These are batteries that are easily available. If you want to use rechargeable AA batteries, you can do so as well. And it is user replaceable. Uh, it uses also Instax wide film, which is one of is actually the cheapest of all the film types here. Um, this camera, I, I think in terms of battery life, you can get quite a few packs out of it. Okay, uh, I think you should be able to get about 8 to 10 packs out of this. You should be able to get about 15 packs out of this. Of course, the last device here is the printer. The printer has a built-in uh, rechargeable battery as well. Um, the rechargeable battery uh, charges by a uh, micro USB port here. I suppose you can plug it in and use it, but then uh, if you want to bring it out, you know, then, then it becomes a problem because sometimes it's quite convenient to carry out, you know, you're at an event or something. Uh, maybe it's useful for your work uh, where you can just take some quick shots with your camera and print it out and give it to someone. Uh, so if you want to, as in the reason why it's like this, I'm, I'm sure it's some degree of portability. So uh, I, I do wonder like a uh, few years down the road how, how this is going to pan out. All right, so accessories wise, each camera has their own uh, set of accessories. Um, it also depends on which accessory you can use depends on each camera. Not all SX70s have strap lugs, not all of them have tripod sockets. So this is something you should look out for when uh, looking for cameras such as this. Because if you're the kind who likes to hang your camera on the neck, then you better have uh, strap lugs. The Polaroid i2 has uh, strap lugs as well at the side here. Uh, you can put your own straps. It also has a standard 49mm filter thread here that you can screw any filter to. Uh, the only caveat being is that just make sure your filter doesn't extend beyond this rim so that it doesn't block your LiDAR and your viewfinder here. Uh, also, if you look at it from the side, even if the filter extended a bit, it might hit the lip of the camera here. So just make sure you use round filters. There's a way you can uh, adopt filters to this. I'll show it to you later in a short while. The RF70 has straps at the side here, so it, it has a more of a side profile when you carry it. Um, creative filters-wise, it doesn't have much options, but it does come with its own proprietary uh, uh, filters, so uh, you can screw them on. They're an ND2, 4, and 8 filter set. Uh, of course, these uh, filters uh, are proprietary, so you have to buy them from Mint as well. 
For the SX70, you can do some creative techniques. The reason being is that, actually it's easier to do creative techniques with the, the SX70 variants of cameras because it's an SLR camera. So whatever you see out of the lens is what you get. Uh, you can actually uh, buy uh, filters from Mint. There are actually 3D printed uh, sellers for different filters as well. So here is a special filter that you actually can snap on to these SX70 cameras. And this actually enables you to use uh, filters such as these, like by Cocaine. So let's say if you like to shoot black and white uh, Polaroid film and you want to add the additional contrast, using these 3D printed models, you can actually shoot um, and do creative techniques. And if you notice, it covers the light meter as well, so you don't really have to compensate for any exposure as, uh, when you use this camera. Uh, as I said, for this camera, it's a bit tricky. Um, so actually, I do have a cocaine holder. Uh, what you should do is you should try to screw in the 49mm step-up ring. Okay. And I did some modifications actually to this uh, cocaine holder. So actually, I cut out a hole here and I cut out here just enough so that it fits in perfectly. The reason why you need to cut off this holder is so that the LiDAR can function, but it will still end up blocking your viewfinder there. Uh, using this, you can still, I'm just going to show you uh, by slotting in a, uh, sorry. Okay, so using this, you can actually use your cocaine holders as well for creative techniques. Of course, if you're going to use any magnifying or multi-split images uh, or filters, you can't really check your, your your frame because this is a viewfinder camera. If you're going to use multi-split images, then I would suggest you use a camera like this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the RF70 doesn't have any creative filters. Um, but of course, if you have gels and all that, this camera has a flash. This camera also has a flash. So you can put all your colored gels and filters over it to do creative techniques that I think you may want to experiment with each medium. All right, so we are at the testing area. We have done a very controlled setup here. We have our sharpness target on one side. We've kept it as upright and as flat as possible. I'm going to be using a light meter to meter the scene here. Currently, our settings are f11 at 1 over 60 of a second. Then we will set up our premium cameras here. We're going to use a, a cable release so that we reduce the shake and vibration on the camera itself. And we're going to use this illumination from this uh, strobe, I guess. Uh, to just illuminate everything evenly and keep the test as standardized as possible. The sound of death. Alright, so the Polaroid i2 has a firmware update, so we're going to do that right now using the app. And we're done. So uh, we did, uh, I, I guess it's only natural that we did a sharpness target test on all these cameras. Um, as I mentioned before, our test is uh, as scientific as we can make it. But if you ask me whether we're doing it exactly how it should be done, I wouldn't say it is exactly right. But this, I guess, is the closest anyone has made it. Um, the first time we shot with the, we used the same uh, pack in all the cameras, uh, except, of course, Polaroid being Polaroid, we use the same packs here, and the white being the white, we use the same packs there, okay? Um, we first shot in black and white, uh, but uh, there was some er error that we experienced with this, so these are images I'm just going to discard. Then we retook the shots using a duochrome that I had. Um, if you look carefully at the shots, this is the SX70, this is the i2. Uh, Sharpness-wise, they are very, very, very similar. Uh, if you ask me which is the sharpest, then it is the i2. Uh, for the Polaroid SX70, we did try to artificially increase the light so that it would force the lens to step down a little and render the image as sharp as possible. So this time, you can I'll, I'll, we'll upload these two images. You can compare them side by side and see if you do notice any differences between them. 
Um, of course, when we compare it to the RF70, um, the i2 actually still wins it, but if you compare it to the SX70, I would consider the lenses equally sharp. Uh, the thing about the RF70 that we did notice is that at the largest aperture, it has quite a bit of softness to it. Uh, I guess it has this dreamy softness that you can take advantage of for portrait shots. But um, if you want a sharp image, I, I think 6.7 and above, so anything above that f11 will be uh, super sharp. The Instax wide, of course, is naturally as sharp as the image taking device. Um, it does look like it rendered all of it here, but when I use my loop to check everything, I did notice that at certain parts, it seems like the bands have come together. So um, of all four cameras, actually the i2 is the sharpest, these two being a close second, and this would be in a way the least sharp in this case. So you may be wondering which camera is uh, best for you. If you want the sleekest form factor, then there is no other camera than the SX70. Sorry, I have the filter here that's blocking. Yeah, so nothing will beat the size and form factor of this. Of course, this is an SLR also, which none of these cameras are. So if you like to take macro photography, uh, having a longer focal length, this camera will do a much better job if you like to take like flowers, insects, all this. Um, if you want the camera with the most manual function, then of course it's the instant RF70. Uh, it is also a rangefinder. So some of you who have like, let's say, are shooting on a, another old school film rangefinder, you'll find that this camera is... It, okay, so those of you who are familiar with rangefinders will find this uh, very easy to use. It too is a bit compact, uh, but not as compact uh, as the SX70. If you want the sharpest images and you can forego, let's say, the ability to focus manually, then this is the camera for you. Okay, this has, without a doubt, been the sharpest camera in all our testing so far. Even in our previous test, the sharpness is exceptional. They just need to improve on the exposure. So for this camera, you may need an external light meter. Um, Exposure-wise, the best exposures, or rather the, the images with the greatest dynamic range comes from the printer. The printer knows how to compress the color space to maximize your digital images. If you want the most versatility, then this is the device for you. Uh, you can use it, you can use your digital cameras to take shots at night where these cameras may have difficulty. And you can print out an image that is actually quite respectable. So all in all, I think each camera is designed for a different user. You have to kind of decide what kind of a what kind of photography you do, you know, and what kind of photos you want to take or instant images you want to take and decide the camera based on these uh, four options here. So I know some of you may have some comments, uh, some of you may feel why are we comparing these cameras or some of you may even want us to compare other cameras. So if you have any comments, feel free to drop it down below. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next episode of Modern Midlifers.